Welcome to Arizona State University's Global Freshman Academy. This video will cover the topic, sketching the graph of y equals sine of bx, or y equals cosine of bx. How does multiplying x by a constant in the function change the graph? Let's take a look at the function y equals cosine of x. To sketch this graph, we can plot five key points by substituting 0, pi halves, pi, 3 pi halves, and 2 pi into the function for x. The x-coordinates of the key points occur every pi halves units, starting at x equals 0 and ending at x equals 2 pi. And these inputs give outputs of y equals negative 1, y equals 0, or y equals 1. When we graph this, we see that the key points correspond to the x-intercepts minima and maxima within one cycle of y equals cosine x. Multiplying x by a constant will shrink or stretch the graph horizontally. How do we know what key points to graph in our new function? Let's take a look at an example. Let's graph y equals cosine of 2x. For this new function, we no longer have an angle of x, but rather an angle of 2x. To find five key points for the graph, we want the angle 2x to equal 0, pi halves, pi, 3 pi halves, or 2 pi. If we solve these equations for x, we will let x equal 0, pi fourths, pi halves, 3 pi fourths, and pi. If we were to substitute these values into our equation, we would once again find outputs of 1, 0, and negative 1. When we graph this, we see that multiplying x by a constant greater than 1 will shrink the graph horizontally. What if we multiplied x by a fraction less than 1? Let's take a look at an example where we do this. Here we have the standard graph of y equals sine of x. Now let's see what would happen if we graph y equals sine of 2 thirds x. To find five key points for the graph, we want the angle 2 thirds x to equal 0, pi halves, pi, 3 pi halves, and 2 pi. Solving these equations for x, we see that x equals 0, 3 pi fourths, 3 pi halves, 9 pi fourths, and 3 pi. If we were to substitute these values into our equation, we would find outputs of 0, 1, 0, negative 1, and 0. Another way we could have solved this would be to focus on the period of the graph. What part of the graph is the period? Let's go back to the standard function y equals sine of x. The period of the graph is how long it takes for the graph to repeat itself. For the function y equals sine of x, the period is 2 pi. This is because from 0 to 2 pi, we see one complete wave. Then at 2 pi, we see the wave begin again. If we were to obtain the graph of y equals sine of 2 thirds x, we know we need to stretch the graph horizontally. We know that the period of the standard graph equals 2 pi. To transform the graph, we've multiplied by 2 thirds, so we'll say 2 thirds times the standard period equals 2 pi. To solve for our new period, we multiply both sides of our equation by 3 halves and we see that our new period has increased from 2 pi to 3 pi. This tells us that the graph crosses the x-axis at 0, 3 pi, and halfway between these two points, which is at 3 pi halves. The graph will be at a maximum of 1 at the midpoint between the first two x-intercepts, and the graph will be at a minimum of negative 1 at the midpoint between the second two x-intercepts. We see that these values are the same ones we found using the first method, and the resulting graph is the same as well. Okay, so to sketch a sine or cosine graph where x is multiplied by a constant, we will either stretch or shrink the graph horizontally depending on whether the constant is less than or greater than 1. We can either focus on the input angle x or the period of the graph when finding which new key points to plot. That's exactly right. Great work!